<laughs> it's Annette Pasternak again, Stop Stand Kicking Coach, and I'm here with Christina Pearson. I'm honored that she's going to interview me. I'm honored and a little bit scared <laughs> that she's going to like ask me some questions uh, for you guys, or for you. And for me. Okay. Okay. So through my work in working with BFRBs over the past three decades, this wonderful woman appeared in my life, what, 10, 15, I don't know how long ago, but a number of years ago. Not that long, Christina. Yeah, it's been a long time. Not that long. Well, less than 10 years. Less than Much 10 years, yeah. wow. But I could feel, I could feel the resonance of her, her deep awareness of some of the say the operational mechanisms underlying skin picking and had experienced enough in her own life about ways to navigate that um, I have a bunch of questions that are really from me to you about so before you pick what it, do you here's the question are you triggered first by a feeling or by a thought a Healing, I think, unless I don't recognize that there was some thought before that. I'm just maybe asking. both. Maybe different. It depends at different times. It's uh, you know, sometimes it's just like an intense feeling that like just kind of you a know visceral feeling, a visceral, like in the body. Oh, for sure. But then a lot of tension. Sometimes and, and sometimes I can trace it back. Like if I'm, there's been times when I'm just like, every once in a while, a few months ago, I would feel like I just feel shame. I don't know why, but I would have this feeling. And sometimes I can't really trace it back to the thought, but sometimes you can, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, okay. And. Um, now this is a yeah. really interesting aspect of recovery that Annette is discussing because it is that ability to backtrack, to look at, to be in the moment. Here I am, I'm deeply engaged in picking or pulling, whatever, but to just take a moment, take a snapshot in time of where's my body, am I breathing? Uh, my thinking about things, just checking in to get a sense of and it was so amazing so many years ago. I remember I was sitting up on the bathroom sink, you know, to get closer to the mirror and I had just spent like an hour on this side of my face. I was getting ready to shift. I felt the, sh the, sh the sink started to shake. I was like, oh my God. But what was interesting is as I turned my body to try to get a different perspective, I recognized I was not breathing. That I was just, I was actually in this really kind of maintenance mode of panting in my upper chest. And it was the first time I said, Oh my God, I'm not breathing. And I, I really breathed in. And you know, it actually kind of helped break that, mm -hmm. that uh, being sucked in. Yeah, I've and, had that. Same and experience. it helped me. And I used that over the next few months. And you know, I now have almost probably about 25 years of almost no picking, which is pretty darn incredible after 27 years of suffer. Yeah, that is incredible. I but mean, the, I it's like part of me, I almost said I strive to say that one day, but there is a large part of me that like doesn't care. And it, and I, <laughs> see, I, no, you have to get me right. I want to be clear on this. I'm not trying not to pick. Right. I just don't need to like I used to. I certainly do grooming that I feel is appropriate. If I have a big old blackhead, no, I don't want that. Okay? But it doesn't trigger me to make to gouge holes in my skin. It doesn't trigger me to tear my back apart or my butt and my breasts. Mm -hmm. I used to pick the tops up here and it was, just, oh God, so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is I don't really care if, but I'm aware that I don't want to get trapped. Mm -hmm. 
that's and you don't either. No, right? I don't. I, um, yeah, and I, I feel really confident that, I mean, there's no way I could ever go back to where I was, you know. But sometimes I have to be careful. Right. Because, you know, sometimes it is kind of tempting. You're like, mm, let me check things out and, like, maybe clear a few pores or whatever. And then and then I start to get that feeling and yeah. that kind of tension. I'm not breathing, like you said. That's the tension. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, um, you know, whereas in the past it was like there was nothing. I mean, there was n no way to control it before I like literally just had my mirrors covered for over a year I had put stuff on my fingers before I went to bed I all of that um, and then after that you know there's times like I'm kind of like at the edge where it's like there are times where I still kick a little uh, maybe I could be better. like every human being Okay. Yeah, practically, right? So it it's not that? about not picking. It's about it's about being healthy. It's about taking care of ourselves and learning what works and what doesn't. So for instance, I'm listening to Annette and I'm remembering, you know, I would feel a need that if, if I cleared one pore, I would then need to clear every pore and then the next day I'd look like I had measles and or whatever, depending on whatever in the body, I put holes in my legs. Oh. And so the, the, the real thing is about, um, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like waking up enough to say, you know, I don't like being trapped in this tight loop of, it's like building a cocoon, a psychic cocoon in a way, and then you can't get out. And uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, you know, most of it biological, because the body learns what works. And, um, but I began to ask myself, right when I was getting close, okay, I'd say, do I really want to go there? And how will I feel about this tomorrow? And the day after? And when it gets infected? And that was, I had never thought forward. Never. And that works for you. And yet, I've heard you say, think you can't think your way. What is it? Well, what I say is that, well, and here, okay. We behaved our way in, mm -hmm. and we have to behave our way out. You have to do the behavioral footwork where the body will just do what the body's been trained to do. That's what I mean. So I can have all these, I can. Here's a good example. I walk into the bathroom, I see the mirror, and my first response for many, many years was to just get up close to the mirror. It didn't matter if it was in the hallway of the Marriott, in a public bathroom. As long as there was nobody around, it was me in the mirror. Boom! And the, the, the funny thing is, is that um, I had to learn that I had kind of programmed my body, just like learning to drive a car. You know, you don't know how to drive a car, and then you learn to drive a car, and then you forget about how to drive a car because it's in your operating system. So to me, I'd see a mirror, it would trigger, got to check it out. And I had to behave my way out of that. If I only thought my way, it didn't change my body. So then, then, once I began to have some space and was able to walk down a hall and say, oh, there's three mirrors in this hall, and I'm just going to walk right past them, not even look at them. That was training my body to go by mirrors. Not, and I had to think about it, of course, but I couldn't just think about it because there's such a reaction, physical reaction, you know. So we behave our way in by accident, and we need to also behave our way out. Because I get people and they're like, oh my God, I have, I, I've thought this all the way through. I'm such a good analyst. I know every reason I pick. So why am I still picking? And then we just do the footwork, teach the body that, oh, you don't have to get tense when you go by a mirror. You don't have to touch yourself all the time in a certain way. 
you know, there's just, and these are things that you learn, like teaching a child how to walk. And so those are body things. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to look at most of us have really messed up thinking, or at least around our self images, our skin, our, our certain body processes, and that that needs to be straightened out. And uh, don't believe everything you think. Mm -hmm. So my question, back to the, because this is really a big thing. Mm -hmm. So we, we feel a feeling, and maybe it's, some, it's just a feeling a little bit uncomfortable or a sense of tension, and then there's a desire to touch, maybe. And then there's a desire, once we find something, which is like finding gold, you know, mm -hmm. oh, wow, oh, wow, this is such a good bone. Okay. And then we got to get up and go to a mirror, at least I did, would have to go and try to see it in the mirror, because for me, visuals is a mm -hmm. huge thing. And, and that was when, once, once the behavior, once I've touched, then comes in the thinking. Really need to do this? Uh, oh, I just I, I better get rid of this because then it'll be. So what kind of thinking would come up for you? And take care of it, you know. Oh. That's. I mean, it's a great question because like, it's one of those that you know. I leave people to do. <laughs> I might be one of those people that there's not a whole lot of thought That's right. that goes into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it might just be a visceral sense yeah. of, of, you know, needing to smooth the skin or needing to void. I always yeah. felt like I was doing important neurological busy work, <laughs> cleaning up, cleaning up. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm somebody that I didn't have the thought it was just like I wanted to do this, but the thoughts are helpful. It is helpful for me to remember thoughts to remind myself to step away from the mirror. Right. And right. Uh, yeah, like you don't want to do that. You know, don't want to go down this road again or whatever. And then the other issue, and uh, lately uh, my big focus has been on uh, kind of skewed thinking. I, there's a uh, new diagnostic, uh, something like thinking thought disorder. Or something. Oh, really? Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I don't know it exactly. I'll find out. But here's the thing. So then, okay, so you're in front of the mirror, or you're sitting there in the sun and picking at your leg or whatever. And what my experience was, it gave me a platform so that I could think about all kinds of things in my head. Maybe I was mad at my boyfriend or whatever, um, and just but there would be no emotions attached to it mm -hmm. because that part of me was mm -hmm. super busy in my skin process, yeah. and that intrigues me. How many of us do this displacement? Yeah, um, and yeah. I had to learn how to not. very difficult to learn to process those things mm -hmm. without having that step back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over like keeping the emotions from coming up, from really feeling them by doing the picking, right? You're just I like, think so. Yeah, I think so too. And, um, and when you reduce or stop it, emotions can come up more. Uh, and as long as you, you know, you, I mean, you have to learn to deal with them. Or you, I, I don't think you can really stop picking. If you're an emotionally driven picker, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to uh, be free of this until you learn how to feel those negative emotions and tolerate them, right? You yeah, and more than them. that, what I've learned is... I told them that I was. I felt. I grew up as a kid. I felt like I was a head with legs because from here down, I I, I didn't want that because it, it hurt too much mm -hmm. to have a feeling. Anyway, um, but I have learned that to process feelings effectively, I do have to acknowledge them and feel them. But I don't have to interpret them as the end of the world. 
that was a big, big step. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes a feeling for many of us can feel so extraordinarily horrible just from the intensity of it that we'll just do anything to shy away from it. And what I learned is that that doesn't help me because it ends up with disfiguring my body and also repressing kind of parts of my life, you know, my ability to respond emotionally. Oh, the other thing is, is that when I would feel a feeling, if it was uncomfortable, let's say you, some, somebody embarrasses you, well, I would feel my system kind of collapse and kind of shut down, and I feel like, you know, I just feel sick or whatever, and um, I learned that I was tensing. Even though I felt like I was collapsing, I was actually tensing and stopping breathing. And what I learned to do was to welcome the feeling. And the more open, the less tense I am, the faster it moves through. So it's more like, a, you know, ah, oh, that irritated me. But you're done with it instead of it jamming. Mm -hmm. And for me, that emotive link is a huge part of behavior for me. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah.